Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be looking at the sunflowers here, getting the site cleared up, getting it ready for this year's sunflowers. So here last year I had quite a few sunflowers, you can see them here, this was left of them. It's now the uh, very end of February, so it's just starting to warm up. There is actually a heat wave at the moment, it shouldn't be warm at this time of year, but unusually it is. So I'm actually going to make a start now, even though it's a bit early for Scotland normally. Um, but I want to make a start now because I'm worried that if these fall over with the warm, with the warm weather is basically going to cause the stems to rot, they'll fall over and then the uh, the seeds will be lost in the ground. And what I wanted to do this year is something a bit different. As I say last year I had lots of them, I grew them on from seeds indoors, they're all named varieties. Uh, I had giraffe which is that tall one right at the back, just kind of here. I had titan which is, which is also tall one, but this one fell over and that's a multi-stemmed one, it's quite nice. Um, and I had Titan as well, which are some of the thicker stemmed ones. I think this one here, and there's another giraffe at the end. But with doing that last year, it was a lot of work. I had to grow them indoors in a grow box, which kind of reduced the amount of space I had for other plants because the sunflowers take up quite a lot of space, even when they were seedlings, as I had them all individually potted. I then had to acclimatize them on my balcony for a few weeks before I could take them out of here. So the whole process did take quite a long time and I was quite busy with work and stuff so it was really a bit troublesome to do it. So this year I'm just going to make it a lot more simple and also doing it this way I might get some interesting new varieties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the seeds from these ones and plant them instead of actually buying name varieties. So the, the, what will be good about this is these are all different varieties. This smaller one here was actually a red variety so that there's going to be a bit of colour difference as well as height and size difference and they should have all cross-pollinated last year and so the seeds in this in these heads will be a real mixture of all the different genetic materials from the different sunflowers so I should get some interesting varieties some might be multi-stemmed like that one some might be tall and single some might be red orange yellow a few different colors so it'll be interesting to see what does come up from these seeds um, I've got quite a good selection I've checked the seeds some of them are rotten um, but most of them are probably all right so I'm just going to sow a lot of them you can see here huge head loads and loads of seeds on that this one was also a great big head but I think either the birds have got to it or or the wind or it's just kind of rotted off and most of those have been lost that was actually the largest sunflower I had um, but considering there's nothing left on the floor I'm presuming it was probably uh, birds that have eaten it all also got a nice sized one here you can see plenty of nice seeds this one's a bit different than much longer seeds. The seeds are all different shapes and sizes as well, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. And then up here, got this really big one as well. It's got plenty of seeds. You can even see with the warm weather, the ladybirds are now starting to come out. There's this little, little ladybird just there. So I'm just going to set about, remove everything from the site. There are a few existing plants here already, which I'll have to be careful of. So I had planted a Rudbeckia in here. There's also a, a Verbena bonanensis. And there's also a, um, a dahlia somewhere in here as well. The dahlia might have been killed by the frost. So I'll be careful not to take them out. But the plan is I'm going to remove all this grass. Last year was very dry and I wasn't able to weed much. So I put a lot of grass clippings on the surface. The idea of that was to get rid of the weeds and also for less watering. And I've not weeded this once since I planted them up. So you can see there's not many weeds considering that's almost probably about eight or seven or eight months that hasn't been weeded. So I'm going to weed it as well. I'm going to fork it over. I'm going to put some blood fish and bone into the soil. Blood fish and bone is a, is a slow release fertilizer, an organic fertilizer, so that should feed for most of the season. It's also quite useful because the nitrogen element in it is released a lot quicker than the potassium and phosphorus, and the nitrogen increases his, um, the leafiness of the plant. So, what that will do is in spring, the plants will go really big and lush, nice big fat leaves be able to absorb lots of sunlight and then when it comes to later in the year most of the nitrogen would have been used up and you don't want not, lots of nitrogen later on in the season because that's when all the flowers come you want potassium and phosphorus particularly the potassium and that will encourage good flowering and so with that blood fish and bone it the, the right amounts of nutrients come roughly about the right time and we'll probably give it some supplemental feeding as well if the weather allows last year was too dry so most of the feed I put on didn't get washed into the soil, stay in the surface. So I'm just going to dig that over with a fork, loosen it in, make sure it's well mixed in and put in some extra feed as well. Uh, I don't think I'll put any compost, I've got a little bit left over, but um, I think it's fine for now. I might do a top mulch of compost later, because I have put a lot of compost in this soil late, uh, in the past. And when I dig it over, I'll have a look at it and I'll, uh, I'll judge whether it needs compost or not. So I'm just going to go ahead now, as I say, clear the site, dig over the soil, get all the seed heads ready 
and then I'm just going to broadcast a load of sunflower seeds along the back um, and along the front I'm probably going to end up putting some Californian poppies because they're quite carefree you just put the seeds in they'll normally just germinate and be happy to grow along by themselves they don't need much care or attention and they also give a long flowering period it should be the whole summer that they're flowering So as you can see from this, they've got a good amount of seed. There's a lot of chaff in here as well, but I'm just going to plant the chaff because that doesn't do any harm. It's just going to rot down. That should be fine. And it's interesting to see the differences. So as I say, some of them are very flat and small, or, or flat and short, should I say, such as this one here. Um, I think that was from the Titan. And then I've got some very long, thin ones as well. So it's quite a different difference in the seed shape and colour as well, which is which is interesting. Now there was there's a few very small ones, um, but I didn't have many of them at all, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to find any now. Um, but I did plant some of them out already because they were from the the small branching red plant. And if I want any of the smaller ones, I'm going to need to put them in front of a window so the window isn't completely blocked. So I did put these ones here, and these ones they're quite long, but. Not as quite as long as the other ones and they are a bit shorter as well. So I'm just going to go now, set the camera up, I'm just going to distribute them all, all kind of evenly along the bed. More, a little bit more towards the back, because as I say I'm going to try and interplant the front with some Californian poppies. You can see there's a very large amount of sunflower seed. I wouldn't normally plant this close, but because these seeds have been sitting in the heads all winter long, the viability is going to be pretty low. They've been through a lot of frost, a lot of dampness as well. This is the bit that I said is in front of the window, so I've only put the small seeds in there. And this is the second bit. Also, because it's quite early in the year, I'm expecting a lot of mice and also birds to eat these. I will get a rake and just push the soil over towards the back just to cover them a little bit. But as I say, I expect a lot of rodents and birds to come and eat these um, these seeds, so we'll see what happens. Um, I should get a good amount germinating, um, probably too many, which is not a bad thing. What I'll do is I'll come out and I'll thin out any ones that are the weak ones, keep the strongest looking ones, and with a good genetic diversity like this, we should hopefully have a few hybrids which are going to be extra vigorous. We can leave them, we can, it should be quite easy to tell which ones are strong vigorous hybrids. They'll, and I can just leave them and we'll be left with really strong healthy sunflowers so I think that's it for this video I'll give you guys updates um, now as I say it is the end of February so it's very early to be doing this um, normally in Scotland I wouldn't think about planting sunflowers until April um, or even outside in late May if I'm planting them inside to begin with to get them a head start but it's been exceptionally mild recently it's about 15 16 degrees today normally you know you're expecting below freezing at night about five or six in the day maybe a bit of snow but this year has been quite exceptional so we'll see what happens if they do all die off i have got other seeds that i'm going to sow as well i'm not going to do as many as it last year because it was a bit too much work but i will do a few seeds and they're just going to be my favorite varieties and i'm just going to put a couple of them in as well just in case nothing else comes up so that's it for now as i say i'll give you guys an update it'll probably be quite a while it'll probably be april may maybe even june